Good, just checking. Good, everything is working. Hello, uh, I am Marilyn, as Green said. Thank you, Green, and thank you to the previous panel as well. It was a very good introduction to what I'm going to say because they told a lot about like foreign talent and everything uh, concerning that. I am Marilyn once again. Uh, my background is actually from the Estonian startup community. I have worked for Garage 48, organized hackathons in Estonia and abroad. Uh, and now, yes, I work on the Estonian startup visa. So just a very brief overview. Oh, I, I just noticed I don't have the time on, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll try to time my... Thank you so much. Uh, so just a very brief overview of uh, how the startup visa got started. So once upon a time, uh, I think uh, roughly six, uh, or sorry, uh, three, four years ago, uh, the startup community and the government kind of started to work together to make it easier for foreign talent to come and work in Estonian startups. Because we saw that it, uh, the sector is growing, we're going to have more people that we need to work in the startups, uh, there needed to be an easier solution than the months-long process to bring in employees. So fast forward to 2017, in the beginning, uh, on the 18th of January, uh, the startup visa was launched. I, I do know, I've heard of some stories that in the beginning they didn't anticipate that much uh, interest in the startup visa, so we thought that maybe we're going to get 50 applications. Turned out there were 300 companies that wanted to bring their startups to Estonia. Uh, last week we celebrated the, two, the two year anniversary. So uh, let's see what the numbers uh, are saying to us. Um, it's safe to say that the Estonian startup visa is probably one of the most popular startup visas in the world. Uh, a little bit about the process so you know what numbers I'm talking about. So the first step of the startup visa is uh, for the company that wants to relocate their founders or employees to Estonia, they have to get the startup status. Uh, the startup committee is a seven member uh, committee that uh, includes seven organizations from the Estonian startup ecosystem who assess the application or assess the companies whether they're a startup or not. So the number 1,137 is the number of companies that have wanted the startup status in order for them to be able to get the startup visa for their founders or their employees. It's also uh, two things in one. One, it's the visa, which is for one year and you can extend it for six months. But under the startup status, you're also eligible for the temporary residence permit, which allows people to stay in Estonia for five years. And after that, you can get another temporary residence permit. Uh, the, interest has, uh, the interest is worldwide. We've had applications from over 80 countries. I'm going to show you more countries than, uh, than are on this slide as well. The success rate of the companies, meaning that the, the companies that get the startup status, uh, is around 36 to 40 percent. It, uh, it increases and decreases over time. So 411 companies have received the startup status. But before it was launched, uh, we, we also included a list of existing Estonian startups like TransferWise, Taxify, who don't need the startup status, they don't need to apply for the startup status, let's say that. So, you can see the countries where most interest comes from, but what is even more important than the number of startup statuses we give out is the number of people that actually come to Estonia. And the people who have applied or been granted uh, the startup uh, visa or the t temporary residence permit is close to 1,000 already. And within next year, we know that we need more and more uh, talent coming to Estonia. We are, our goal is to relocate 1,000 people to Estonia. Whether they're founders or, or employees, it doesn't even matter at this point. So here, just, uh, just a brief overview of what the top countries for founders are. You can see India, Pakistan, Russia, Turkey, Iran, and Ukraine. Uh, please show the number of uh, how many people have already gone, gotten visas or temporary residence permits. Uh, and also for, uh, for employees, it's, uh, uh, for visa and temporary residence permit, it's the same. So Ukraine, Brazil, India, Russia, and USA. So these are the people or these are the countries where employees come from. 
But what's next? Luckily, I have enough time to talk about the important of uh, important things about what do we need as a community uh, from the government and from from the whole of Estonia. So what was I really like what was said in the previous panel? Yes, the the marketing we do as a country is really good. People are coming here, but we need first of all we need more people. So it's good that the access to Estonia to the to the market and to for the talent is made easier. But when the people come, we also need more bene more beneficial and more uh, developed public services, also private services. So we need the public and private offices also to work together. We have talked about banks, uh, but but it's also uh, kindergarten places, schools. We need uh, we need more services uh, for these people who are coming in. But the reality is, if we if we develop them, they're also better for the Estonian people. Uh, soft landing and custom approach to the people who come here. We mean basically the founders who come here, they all have different interests. So for the startup community, it's important to catch these people and, uh, and really start catering to what they need. And last but not least, we need strategic partnerships, which we are working on constantly in Estonia and abroad. So in Estonia, what I've already said, public services, all of the services that are offered, but in in uh, in the countries where we see most talent coming from, we need partners who uh, bring us the right people, who, who show us where the people who want to relocate to Estonia, who would benefit from it are. So these are the things that we are working on uh, during uh, 2019. I'm uh, almost out of time, but... Uh, if you want to know more, come catch me uh, at this conference or follow us. And there's also this really cool podcast that we launched last year. There are six episodes, and you can find out more of how, what, how it is like, or what is it, what, what is it like to actually start up in Estonia. Uh, and uh, the next speech, don't go away, because Kun, one of the foreign founders who have, who is here with the startup visa, he's going to talk about how it is to actually be a foreign founder in Estonia. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. So you did a very ni nice introduction to our next speaker. So I'm yes. not even like uh, repeating, you know, the essence of it. But mm -hmm. I will. Let's just join together. Kun from Gipwai is here and share your story. How you made use of startup visa. There you go.